All right, here we go. This 5 o'clock hour, my goodness. Uh, college football dominating so much of the last few weeks. Chris Vanini, we've had him on before, reporter, college football reporter for The Athletic. And he had a story today. UCF has money, fans, new facilities, plan, and conference realignment. Will someone notice? Chris, thanks for your time. Uh, they're they're going to go into this overdrive and, and do all the things that they need to do. Is If all the teams out there that are not connected, not including whoever the hell is left of the Big 12, are they the most valuable of everybody, or is it Brigham Young or someone else? It's probably BYU, but you just you have to deal with everything else that comes with that place, including not playing games on Sundays, the religious aspects um, that are that are unique to there. But you know, this is largely focused on who's joining the Big Twelve because it really seems like nobody else is going anywhere. The, the ACC, Pac twelve, and Big Ten aren't going to add anybody most likely. That's part of what this alliance announcement was, that they're not going to raid each other. And you kind of get the benefit of expansion without actually expanding if you're the Pac-12. So it's kind of looking at, all right, the Big 12's left at eight. Who are the candidates to join? BYU's probably at the top of that list from a financial perspective. Then you've got UCF, Cincinnati, and uh, Houston are probably the ones uh, otherwise on that list. Chris, do, do you, does it matter that you know they've got three Texas teams and Houston would be a fourth, or is it maybe just about how many alumni and how many bigger schools can I get into this? Well, I think it's a factor. I, I, I mean, if you're Texas Tech, you know, you're probably concerned about Houston coming into the Big 12 and being put on a level playing field because Houston's got all the facilities. It's got, uh, it, it's got the obviously much better uh, proximity to talent, you know, at what point, if you're one of those other Texas schools, you worry you're just inviting another school that could replace you or, or just kind of go ahead of you on the, the, the pecking order at some point. So that's a, that's a concern for sure. But I think that at the end of the day, the flip side is if Houston brings us the most television money, then Houston might be the best option for the conference. Chris, what were your thoughts on the uh, Alliance and their announcement today? Uh, I thought it was largely meaningless for the moment. Um, th this, you know, when this first kind of came out, I was saying this at the time. My colleague Nicole Arbach was saying this at the time too, which is this wasn't really about scheduling. You know, it's fun to talk about potential schedules and playing each other and stuff like that. But what this is really about is, hey, the SEC just dropped a bomb on us at a time when college sports are about to be completely reshaped here with NCAA changes. Let's the three of us get on the same page, promise not to poach each other, make sure ESPN and the SEC aren't moving all the pieces, and let's just slow this thing down. And that's largely what we got today. That's what they essentially said they were going to do. There, there's no contract that they signed because, you know, especially when it comes to scheduling, there's nothing really you can do. They said they're not going to blow up game contracts, so most teams are scheduled out for the next three or four years, so you wouldn't even – have much room anyway unless you change conference schedules so scheduling stuff's not going to happen for a while this is really about just announcing hey we're going to try to be on the same page here and, and, and make sure the SEC doesn't pull, pull a fast one on us again uh with all due respect to whatever they announced today do you feel like the SEC even realized they announced anything today <laughs> you know it doesn't it doesn't really change nothing for them. I think Greg thank you released a statement to my colleague Andy Staples today. And, and you know, the, in the announcement, they tried to say, hey, we want to work together. But we also know we want to work with other conferences. We want to work with the SEC and the Big 12 and the Group of Five and everything. So um, th this was a lot of hullabaloo for something that really is not going to be impactful to most fans at all. Yeah, I got to tell you, I, I'm almost bored talking about it. Not with the good, legitimate questions and stuff like that, because I just never got much out of today at all. Like nothing other than, okay, we, maybe we were forced or felt forced. We had to say something, and really nothing ever came out. Yeah, the the biggest thing here is these three conferences were not on the playoff working group that came up with the 12 team proposal. It was the commissioners from the SEC, the Mountain West and the big 12. And now we find out that the SEC was working on this Texas Oklahoma deal.
without telling anybody, without telling the Big 12 who was right there in the room. And so now you, they, they say, all right, wh- what are potential other motivations for the SEC wanting this 12-team playoff? Part of it is, hey, if we do the college football playoff expansion in 2023, ESPN has exclusive negotiating rights. ESPN gets to continue to control everything. If, if you wait, push it out to 2026, Fox could get involved, maybe CBS, maybe NBC, maybe you have an NFL situation where two different TV partners split it up. Because the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and the Big 12 uh, have deals with Fox, and they don't want ESPN to essentially become this, this, this kind of controlling everything in the sport when there's so much on the line, especially when now that they have full control of the SEC. So these leagues just kind of want to slow that all down a bit. Chris, what do you make of them not signing any kind of co- like official contract with this alliance? Well, it, it, it's largely because the most important stuff, the, the, the reason this was really done, you don't need a contract for it. And if you sign some sort of contract, it's going to have some sort of scheduling guarantees, most likely. And those are things that these teams just can't commit to. Because, you know, back in 20. 20- 11, 2012, I want to say, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 came together in a scheduling agreement. They said they were going to play each other for every year. Seven months later, it went out the window because the Pac-12 was moving to nine games. There was expansion going on, and it never really got off the got off the, got off the track. So if you just want to say, hey, we want to kind of make sure we're talking to each other, you don't need a contract for that. And that's really all this is. The scheduling stuff is, is so far down the road anyway. You couldn't really guarantee it. So, Chris, uh, I saw Jim Phillips' uh, explanation for why the Big 12 wasn't involved, and it makes sense. I mean, they're a conference that's in flux right now, and they don't have any flagship programs uh, at the moment. Uh, what do you think today's events uh, mean for the Big 12 moving forward? And obviously, they, they teased the, you know, we're going to have something on expansion in the Pac-12 by the end of the week. I see a lot of people that assume that that's going to mean yeah. nothing, uh, quite frankly, which would leave the eight still sitting there. So, uh, what does this mean for Big 12 schools, if anything? It doesn't change anything in the short term because, again, it wasn't really expected that any of those conferences would add any of the other Big 12 teams. What what The biggest concern would be future scheduling down the road if if the Big 12 is still together, you know, five years down the road. If, if the Big 10 is going to play, you know, eight or nine conference games plus a Pac-12 game plus an ACC game, you probably want a group of five or FCS game in there or, or, or something. Then uh, is the Big 12 going to get squeezed out of these type of games or is the Big 12 going to have to turn to the SEC for a lot of its non-conference games? Um, I, and that's where I think it possibly comes into effect. But in the short term, it doesn't really make a difference because I, I don't think these conferences were going to grab any other of, of the other Big 12 teams. But it's certainly a, I mean, essentially a slap in the face to just basically be like, you know, you don't really matter at this moment for this, so we're not going to include you. Yeah, uh, Big Twelve's used to it. They used to get slapped around they're a little kinda, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's it's an, and they're almost stuck right now. They're in this battle to try to save, uh, to get money from two people, two big dogs that are leaving, and also kind of stuck. If they start flirting with somebody else, they could be used against them. It's a weird. It's a weird deal. Chris, now, the, the story is also obviously about UCF and what they've done. They've come on. They uh, It's not like they're brand new, but they are new when it comes to the national-type exposure because of that team that's unbeaten in Dante Culpepper even back in the day. What is their? What do they think is the biggest issue they must correct when it comes to who they are and how people look at them as possibly a Power 5 school? It's basically, as with any uh, team that wants to get into the Big 12, it's do you provide TV value Mm -hmm. for the Big 12? That's going to be the ultimate decision. The Big 12 is going to add who adds to their their pie. That's why the conference did not expand in 2016, because ESPN told them, hey, if you add any of these teams, it's going to decrease how much you're getting for school. And so they didn't do it. With Texas and Oklahoma out, Bob Bowles, we said that's going to – that 24 or 28 million, whatever it is, um, in TV money is going to be cut in half at least. So you're, you're talking quite a bit less. And at that point, does the UCF bring value in that? And there's reason to think they do. I, I put together the numbers in the story, and UCF games on, on ABC, ESPN, ESPN2 are averaging about 1.09 million viewers 
from 2018 to 2019, taking out last year being all weird. That's essentially the same as the Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma. So, so they are comparable in, in, in that aspect. They've also got an alumni base of seven. I'm sorry, they have an enrollment of 70,000. They have a, a growing alumni base. Uh, they, they, they have facilities, they have an athletic budget that's currently $73 million, which is not far behind Kansas State, uh, which is the lowest in the Big 12. So they, they, they think that um, these things will help them in the long term, but they got to convince people right now that they provide money from that they provide uh, value just financially. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your time. Chris Vanini, the athletic.com national college football writer, Craig, for your edification, pro wrestling tweets uh, oh. on top of that as well. Uh, we'll have Craig's uh, Paul's top five here momentarily. You know, I think with the, uh, the PAC 12 uh, announcement on Friday, we'll find out for sure, obviously, but if the tea leaves being read are to be believed at this point in time, and, and you know, Chris there as well did a great job of breaking it down. Uh, I mean, if you had to play some money right now, are you saying they expand or they don't expand? I say they don't, don't expand. Yeah. Okay. I say they don't expand, but I did hear him say something about who the Big 12 will add, which, you know, I mean. Right, which is what. Yeah, so if they don't expand, then that's what I asked earlier. Yeah, I was like, they have, ha they, then the they have to. If they, if they don't, or if nobody gets an invite anywhere else, and Pac-12 comes out on Friday and says, hey, we're, we're staying as is. We got this new alliance. We don't need to do all this crazy stuff, adding teams, splitting the pie. Okay, well, then the eight are really truly the eight. Yeah. And they're not going to be anything other than the eight anytime soon because nobody else is looking either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think today's news, if anything, Friday will be the day. Friday will be the day that we know. But if you're a UCF fan or a BYU fan or a Cincinnati fan, I'm not telling you to get your hopes up or anything, but this could potentially be good it, news for it, you. It, it's probably now. I mean, like, if it's going to happen, it, yeah, well, yeah, this could be it. Unless so. it's just a kick unless, the can yeah, down the yeah. road. From the 513, did you guys?